This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete Sebastian Show, we are back. What is going on, bro? How are you? How you holding up? How am I holding up? Um, you know what? I've uh, come to the conclusion that I'm not going to let Corona dictate my life uh, as long as I feel like I am safe and uh, wearing my mask and, you know, just keeping my distance. Uh, I am going to kick kickstart our life back up and get this show roll, rolling because I, I, I can't. I can't keep doing the same shit night in, day out. I can't. I can't do it. It's bizarre, isn't it, man? I just wake up, you go through your, and here's the crazy thing: the weeks fly by. It's like it's in a weird way doing nothing. It's just we're just walking around aimlessly, bro. It's. I don't get political, but there's something like this. Like uh, we're all under some spell, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's funny uh, how a lot of different people in different parts of the country are are taking on the virus. Uh, I know some friends of mine back in Chicago. I mean, uh, you would look at what's going on over there and not even think there's a full pandemic going on. I mean, no masks, close up, taking photos together. Not that I saw that and said, what am I doing? But I'm just saying... Uh, just being a little bit more uh, open to the idea, you know, like um, I told you we went to a restaurant for for uh, our anniversary last week. Uh, I'm thinking of getting on a plane and uh, and going to North Carolina to visit Lana's family. Uh, we weren't going to go, but I'm like, what the hell are we doing here? And then. Wow. Uh, wow. It just it's like. It's like having some big mole on your forehead that you hope is going to go away, and it doesn't, so you just start going out with it. You're like, I guess I'll go fly. What are you going to do? You're going to be all masked up, two rows behind. Fuck that. Come up with a vaccine and get back to normal. Bro, are you going to do drive-ins? Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so, Tommy. No drive-ins. No drive-ins. But what, what happened last week really kind of... It's amazing what what a little work will do to you. Yeah. I'm going to be working. Um, I can't tell you the hotel. It's in Las Vegas. They're bringing me in to uh, perform in front of VIPs and high rollers. Um, about 50 people outside, but they're seated. I'm 12 feet away from them. And uh, I got four shows booked. Nice, it, bro. It, it was like Christmas came four times in a row. That's I. That's very exciting. That's very. I've literally been uh, looking at my own backyard trying to eyeball seating to do a new special. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And invite people. I already, you know, check the hotel rates to tell them where they can go stay, and we'll party it up afterwards. But I hear you, man. Woo, you're going to do a dry run around your living room? Just, you know. Uh, I don't have any I mean, like, I have material, but I don't have anything organized. I just have, you know, stories that I wouldn't mind telling people. I, I don't know how this is even going to go. I have to go look at video footage of me doing comedy in January and February to even remember my what my normal act is. Then I got all this stuff that I've been kind of sitting on. Not knowing it's funny or not, I don't know if I'm gonna like start testing that out in front of 50 people in Las Vegas. Oh, right, you go, uh, you go to test that out, and then it's not going good. You go, let me fall back on the R and Gina classic, and you're like, oh my <laughs> god, I don't even remember how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever on stage uh, and you're trying? Let's say you lose track or whatnot. And you try doing an older bit that you haven't done in a while, and as you're in the bit. You're actually asking yourself, do I even know the beats of this bit? Oh, absolutely, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and then you skip a beat. And as you do the next beat, in your head you're going, I got to go back and do that other beat. 
Like it's almost like you go, you're doing a bit. And you go. By the way, I forgot to mention the bird was it was yellow. It was a yellow bird. Anyway, so and then you go forward, and it's like oh, the timing's all off. Yes, sir. but here's the good news. I don't know how you feel, but like I spent uh, went away for a, a night to visit Jackie's friends, the ones that uh, flew us privately to Charlotte, and yeah. uh, and I've been hanging out with some other friends, and I've I've been killing in the social environment. <laughs> I mean, I literally out with other people and finding myself going, I have to pump the brakes. These people are going to follow me home. That's how entertaining I was being, bro. I mean, even my wife was dying laughing. I'm like, oh, it's bubbling, you know? <clears throat> oh, I tell you, you get, in a, you get in an environment more than three people. It's an audience. Oh, God, isn't it, though? Oh, my God. I just And they start laughing, and then you start remembering. It's almost like... It's almost like if it wasn't a job, in that moment you're like, "This should, this should be a job. I should pay people to hear this shit." <laughs> it used to be before the pandemic. So, so this is interesting. What you're doing, it's it's starting to be like a, a prohibition, and the, the the country can't drink, <laughs> but the high rollers have private parties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my right. god. So yeah, yeah man. I um. You know, it just just little things to, that we're doing that kind of make you feel good. Lana, her birthday is coming up on uh, on Sunday. Nice. And uh, she, you know, she hasn't bought any clothes in six months. This, she's been on complete mall withdrawal. And, uh, you know, she's like, hey, you know, I, I was looking at my closet. I just, I, I got to get a few things. So I said, yeah, go get a few things. So she came back with some outfits and whatnot. It's amazing, and, and it, whether it be short lived or not, it's amazing what a new outfit will do to you. You know? Yeah, a new just to putting on something new. Absolutely. Oh my God! It's like I put on a. I just bought a pair of uh, sneakers to work out in. I put those on. It's the workout was better. You know? I mean, even if it was for that one day, you know, it just. It's like something about new shoes. You go, yeah, no, I can jump higher. Yeah, all right. Dude, you ever get so crazy where you go to put on a new shirt and you think to yourself, like, if the shirt could think, it would realize how lucky it is <laughs> that it got chosen to be on my <laughs> fucking back, right? You know? If a shirt could know, like, whoa, we're going to see some things on my back, baby. <laughs> I got a question. I opened up a Mack Weldon brand new the other day, right? A nice T-shirt. I've been ha I have them stacked, and uh, I was going, like I said, to see those people. Now, when you open up a brand new T-shirt or a brand new shirt, um, a, a, a one that goes over your head, not a button-up, you ever notice mm -hmm. how it'll have the crease where it was folded when you purchased yeah. it? Jackie's telling me, oh, you got to iron out that little crease. You can see the crease. They know it's brand new. And I'm like, that's why I leave the crease in. <laughs> so they know it's brand new. What the fuck? Who I know? I'm going to unwrap a shirt and iron it? That's like that's like renting a car and taking it through the car wash. I'm with Jackie. Really? Yeah, you can't have. There's actually three lines that, that the shirt has. One down the middle and two down the armpits. Yeah, see what you yeah. got. Yeah, bro. First what? of all, I'm wash I'm washing the uh, the t-shirt right out of the right out of the gate. It's it's even it's not even if it's warm. not made in China. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> really? Why 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 are you washing it? I, I love a crisp brand new shirt, man. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I just I, I go I go a step further with it. I don't even wash it. I, I send it to the dry cleaner. This is unbelievable. As soon as I, Do you even unwrap yeah, it, or you just take the brand new shirts in the package, <laughs> give them to a guy, go take them out, dry clean them, put them on a on a hanger? <laughs> no, you know what I do? I have the dry cleaner fold them. Not nothing hung. I fold them like you were talking about a couple weeks ago with the hotel, how they did it. Yeah, yeah. I I have them folded, and then I just put them right on the shelf in my closet. And then I'm peeling them off like it's, uh, you know, I'm I'm at uh, Macy's. All right. Well, I I tell you, I still stand by. You take the shirt, brand new. You put it on a desk, any flat surface, and you start up at the neck. You keep one hand on the end of the shirt so it won't move, and you start at the neck, and you just do a hand iron three times with your hand, flatten it out. 
<laughs> oh, good, uh, good enough. <laughs> so, when you put a shirt on, like a T-shirt, do you um? How do you go about it? Do you throw your arm in there first? Do you put it around your head and then you put the arms in? What's your technique? Eh, I kind of get one halfway and then and then I kind of go over. It's a, it's a masculine pullover if that's what you're getting at. Well, I well the masculine pullover to me is you put it over your head first and then you shoot your arms through the t-shirt. You don't you don't put your arm in the t-shirt first. Well, let me think about what I do, man. I usually like if I'm putting on a shirt, I usually come and I'm just like that and I come down. I don't know. I don't know. One move I do know I do, which is cool. Sometimes when I put a shirt on, especially when I'm leaving the pool, I put the shirt on. And then when it falls down on my back, it doesn't always it doesn't always fall all the way down. I don't I don't flick it with my fingers to make it fall all the way. I just do a natural walk. And while you're walking, it slowly makes its way all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool, bro. It's Hollywood cool, man. It's just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, geez. So, so, yeah. So I, I, I'm liking your stance against Corona. I really respect it. Although you're like, I'm not, I'm not letting this thing control me. But then you start out going, but I'm going to wear a mask and I'm going to stay six feet apart. So, I mean... I'm barely even masking up anymore. I'm sorry, people. Want to get mad at me. I don't care. Don't even care. I don't know. I don't want to talk about this shit. I'm sorry I started. <laughs> um. So, one of the things that I've been doing during this uh, Corona is golfing. I went golfing on uh, Saturday with uh, three guys. Um, had a had a great time. Um, but here here's where I. I get completely bothered with golf. Yeah. And I could see it coming, right? Like, we golf quick. It's uh, it's not one of these uh, three well, I mean, three practice swings and not uh, – hold on. You there? Uh, this ain't three practice swings and uh, – lining up the shot you know like slow you know i i notice people that do practice swings no matter how many times they're going to practice they're going to get the same shot it's going to it's going to be a grounder across the fairway yeah all right yeah yeah, yeah. so we're we're cooking and we get behind people uh we're on a we're on a cart and we get behind walkers right oh yeah not only that with the with the little trolley they have for the for the golf bag they got umbrellas coming off the damn thing. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is a you so, gotta pass. You got to play through. Got to play through. Right. <laughs> if you saw that, right, would you just generally assume that people are slow golfers? Is, is, it, is it safe to say by analyzing what you're seeing in front of you that you could come to the conclusion that these people play at a pace that t- could take eight, nine That's hours. Absolutely. They're, wrong, they're, right? yeah. come on. they're doing so much walking, they need shade cover. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm right there with you. They literally need umbrellas. Yeah, come on. Even even if it was right. Nick Faldo in his prime, I pull up on you, you're walking, I'm driving. Move over, Nick. I'm fucking playing <laughs> through, guy. I, I got an electric car. <laughs> so... So I'm I'm looking at this, and out of the four guys, I'm the most kind of vocal with it. They're yeah. they're they're pretty patient guys. I'm like, oh look at it, look at this, you know. I do the uh, I do I do the Pete where uh, when they're teeing off, I talk just loud enough where they may be able to pick it up. You ever do one of those where? You don't want to be overly uh, loud about it, but you want to say something where, yeah. where they're up there and they're, they might go, did he just talk about me? Yeah, yeah, right. So maybe he'll whisper to the other guys, "Listen, I think they were just talking about us. Maybe we should just let them play through, right?" <laughs> and then you do the play dumb, right? They go, "Guys, want to play through?" And you go, "What? Yeah, no, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I know the move, guy." And I'm so listen. If I'm playing slow, I'm so uh, hypersensitive of who's in front, who's in back. 
I'm the guy right away that would go, guys, play through. <laughs> We're going through a nightmare here, right? Like, <laughs> I'm right there with you, dude. I mean, I'm, the, I'm seeing them two holes back going. They're probably going to catch up to us by about hole five. By about hole five, we'll <laughs> yeah. probably have to let them play through. I'm right there with you, man. <laughs> Uh, so I, I, I actually had to cut you off, but in the Adirondacks on a vacation, we took Sadie to play mini golf, dude. I, I played through on five teenage girls in mini golf. <laughs> they were like taking turns with their balls. They were in front of us and then oh, they would like uh, take photos with each other. And, and I said, Jack, I got to I got. So finally, I just went up. I said, excuse me, girls. They were like 15. I said, do you mind if we just play through and go to the next hole and then we'll come back? Oh, yeah, sure, no problem. And then Sadie and Jackie were like, good call, way to go. So, yeah, I'm right there with you. Even in mini golf, I do the play through. So how, how did this – How did you, you played through, right? How did this work out? So they tee off. Yeah. So as the guy's up there, I turn to one of the guys I'm with. I go, oh, this guy's doing practice swings. But that was the that was one of the the things I said, hoping he'd catch it, but maybe he didn't. That's that's, that's tacky, bro. That's bully esque, right there, man. That's a, that's too much. <laughs> that is bully esque, but this guy's doing uh, uh, practice swings. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> surprised you didn't just pull your gun out and kind of rub the handle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, yeah, yeah. There's a woman in the group, right? Uh huh. She goes up to tee off. The guy detaches the umbrella, stands behind her with the umbrella as she's, you know, as she's lining it up. Right, right. And then when she's about to swing, takes the umbrella away from her, and she. What? The? Hey, you you gotta have some type of sun disease. <laughs> If, yeah. If the guys bring the umbrella into the tea box, right? you should you be outside? No, this sounds like uh, va- this is like a vampire trying to get a day on the links, right? Holy <laughs> shit! How distracting is someone pulling an umbrella away from your head right before you swing through? By the way, <laughs> I haven't seen that since P Diddy in the Hamptons. By the way, too, of you, someone else holding the umbrella for you for the sun. <laughs> yeah. That's shit. I go. What is it? What is she, John Gotti? I I, I, this is unbelievable. So this, this reeks of playing through, man. Oh God, is it ever? Okay, so the next hole, we do the hey, can we play through. I've never seen this move in golf before, and tell me if you have. They're like, yeah, go ahead. We go. We get up to the next hole. Now. I'm going to I'm just going to blanket statement this cuz I have been around a lot of Korean golfers in my lifetime to know that if you're Korean yeah and you're golfing yeah it could take a day and a half really right? the Koreans golf now, slow very interesting Koreans in their country uh-huh. golf is like a luxury so when they golf if if you get the opportunity to golf in Korea, they make the day of it. I mean, they'll sit on the they'll sit in the middle of the fairway and eat lunch. Yeah. You know, it's wow. like it's like they, they're gonna soak it up. Right? Hey, even the worst golf course I've ever played on, there's at least one or two spots where I look out and go, "Ah, yeah, it's beautiful, man. What a view. That's nice." So I get it. Yeah, milk it, of course. So so but you, so they're gonna milk it. So we did this move. We, we, we didn't even, we didn't even ask him to play through. We skipped the hole. I oh, dig it, dig it. Just did a drive by. <laughs> just, just said we for- And we didn't, we didn't even tell him. We, we just analyzed it. I said, guys, play through. Boom. And we just, and they, they must have gone. They were like, what the hell are they doing? And then smooth sailing from there on in. Beautiful. Skipped the hole. Played 17 instead of 18. But God, was that a nice move. Now, there was no no, no yearning for, for going back and getting that last hole in. No, no. We no. just 
you know, we're just out there hitting it around. We're not playing serious. It's not like we're doing a, uh, you know, Davis Cup where we're looking for a trophy at the end of this. We're out there drinking, having a good time. Oh, all right. And I, I, I tell you, you know, thank God for golf because it has mixed up my the monotony of the week. Whether I go to the range or I, or I get a round in, uh, it's really kind of helped me out. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, How's so your, we did that. How's your golf game, though? I mean, are you seeing improvement? It's terrible. It's terrible. Is there any? What? What? What's, I mean, your, what's your strength? I'm sorry, I can't. Uh, I say within a hundred yards, I'm really good at chipping it up on that green, getting it close to the cup. My putting's terrible. My uh, my driving is inconsistent. My uh, my hybrids all over the place. It, there's there's a lot of work that needs to be done, but just to get out there and and rip each other to shreds on a golf course, you know, it's good to go out with guys that you could. You know, I, I'm not into this like, oh, good pot, good pot. I'm not that guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm like if if you hit it and it goes in the weeds, I go, oh, what a shame. Uh, yeah. You know, it it it's it's like it's a, it's all. The, it's a good time, man. I get it the yeah. whole way through. My, I, yeah, I have like my brother, who's a hilarious guy. When he golfs, I feel like that's his stage. He's the funniest guy on a golf course I've ever golfed with, man. All the time, always, you know. Um, I only once golfed like serious, and when I say serious, it wasn't like serious in the sense that that was in a tournament, but it was the last day of a golf weekend. And no one was drinking anymore, and they were just playing and then going home. And I was with three dudes that nice guys, but I don't know them. Dude, if you're for me, if I'm not drinking and joking with golf, and it's just about golf, oh my god, bro, that is that's tough. That's tough. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, like, will you ever go out by yourself? My dad loves golf so much; he'll go out by himself. Do eighteen. No, I, I need to go out with people. I, I would I wouldn't go out by myself unless I was extremely, extremely bored. I only did that once and that was in Branson, Missouri, while I was playing a gig there. I went out golfing alone. And it wasn't fun because you know, you hit a beautiful shot, no one's there to kind of see it. Uh so it's like did it really happen? But uh did that once, I'll never do it again. Uh, hopefully I'll get up on the links this uh, this week sometime. Although it's going to be tough, Lana's birthday, like I said, Sunday. Yeah, I got some things. <coughs> bless you, bless you. Thank you. I got some things going on um, for that. It's supposed to be a hundred degrees here this weekend. Wow. But um, yeah, um, I want to get into uh, if you don't mind. Oh, thank uh, God you what... put your foot down. What? What is it? I th those socks. I'm trying to keep it together, but what's going on? What are you wearing, man? What are those compression socks from the? <laughs> yeah, it's that's how bad it is, man. What? What? I got I got I got compression socks on. What? Why? What do you What are you wearing those? Because uh, I'm gonna work out after this, and uh, I get uh, my 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 calves get tight. I feel like it keeps my body, uh, you know, just. Yeah. Together. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. It's more psychological than I think anything else. Um, let me see. What's up? Take your time, man. So I want to talk to you about what I got in my uh, this water, this beautiful waterfall. That what you I and sent Jackie you. And... What I sent you. Yeah. All right. I want. Yeah. I want to. All right. I sent you two photos. So this past weekend, as I said, I went Saturday night. Jackie had already left Thursday to go visit her close friend. They have a uh, a second house um on the lake Canadagua Lake, one of the Finger Lakes outside of Rochester. Beautiful, beautiful lake. And uh, so me and Sadie were going on Saturday to meet up with them. So I, by the way, I had Sadie alone from Thursday to Saturday. Oh my. I tell you, if I was an only dad, the kid would have diabetes within two months. <laughs> I, 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 holy shit. We had root beer floats, pizza, McDonald's. Oh, my God. I don't, I don't know how a single mom does it. I'm thinking, oh, when the kid goes to bed, I'm going to watch TV. It's going to be good. By the time the kid went to bed, I was exhausted. I do not know how a single mother does it. I mean, there's got to be an invisible cape. It's fucking insane. So, it, 
it's unbelievable. I'm telling you, they're the stronger of the two uh, sexes, man. It's it's amazing what these women do with kids. And this, and you got one. Imagine two, three single mom. Who? I know. I mean, I mean, I love my kid to death, but by by the end of the day, too, you you, you get that you hear dad, and you go like this. You go, fucking yeah. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> So, so we go Saturday to meet up with Jackie and spend the night at that at their lake house with them. Great people. I've told you about them before. Top shelf people, man. So they're gonna take us on a hike, about twenty minutes from the lake house. There's a gorge, I guess you'd call it, and you hike on the river. And the river's only you know about a half foot. It's cold, but you know a, a ton, you're going over the boulders, so you wear your water shoes and stuff. You hike about a mile and a half, a mile, a mile. And then you get to this giant waterfall. There's two of them. That's one of them, right? And it's really cool. It's really high, like over 100 feet. Now, we get there, and we're all, you know, we got their kids who are older, you know, um, 18, and a, a daughter, too, who's a little older than Sadie. And we're all playing around. It's beautiful. And then there's a rope. You see that photo with the rope? It's the second yeah, photo I, I sent. I, I, yeah, I I gotta I gotta cut you off here on this yeah. just just well, yeah. because uh, I'm not I'm not really into your footwear, bro. I'm wearing Keen water shoes. They are the only footwear to deal with a situation like that. I, you couldn't get like something that covered your feet. Like I mean, this is like it looks like. Uh, it looks like an old man's sandal. Yeah. No, 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 bro. That's the Keen water shoe. It's got the shell on the front. You got to remember, too, it's a bit of a hybrid because sometimes you're in water and there's a little part where you're going up on the dirt and bank. Man, you want your foot to breathe, guy. Yeah. You want your foot to breathe okay. and the water to be able to <laughs> flow through. Some people. Yeah, but like what? you're out, well, you're on this rope, bro, and then you're on dirt. And I'm thinking rocks and gravel are getting in the shoe, right? Well, listen, you're, you're leading right into my point. That shoe was a water shoe. I was told I was going to be doing a water hike on a river to a waterfall. And even the other guy was wearing that kind of shoe. The only other option, some men were wearing those, like, clog things, those plastic ones. What do you call those things? They look like... Oh, uh, yeah, Crocs. Oh, my God. I'm like, what are you, a fucking nurse guy? What are you doing hiking <laughs> through the river and that shit? So, so uh, then when we get there... Off to the side, what you're seeing, there's an embankment, and it had just rained, so that is all clay and mud. And it's even, it's much steeper than it looks, and that's the least steep part. And what they have is ropes. I'll put this up, too, on the video for the show. They have ropes going from each tree to the next tree, and they have knots. So as you, you're climbing up, you can put your hand on the knot and pull yourself up. So... There's a bunch of 18-year-olds, 20-year-olds going up. And what you do is you go all the way up to the top of the waterfall, and then you can go out over the waterfall on these slippery, deadly rocks where somebody passes away at least once a year. Just a fact. All right? So no. I go, want to go up? We're going to go. Well, let's go up. We'll try. And Jackie goes, Jackie goes, I'm going up. And I'm like, all right, well, then I'll go up. Because, you know, yeah, that's my wife has to do that all the time. She's like, I'm going up. So now what am I going to like? Okay, I'll stay down yeah. here and knit a sweater. You know, like now I got to go. <laughs> so then we, she goes, let's take Sadie. So I take two steps. It's clay. It's muddy. And I'm like, Sadie, you're not going up. And Sadie was cool with this. She's like, yeah, I don't want to anyway. So that's done. Right. So then. Jackie and I going up. She's in front of me. I get up to the first tree. Bro, it's really slippery. And I can see where they're crossing over on slippery rocks. You're still holding on ropes, but it's like 100 feet up. And for what? For what? I see the waterfall. I got a great view. I got everything I need, right? So she's going and going. Now the other guy who's with us, he's behind me, and he wants to go. Because now I'm not going any further, right? So I look up at Jack when the guy's not looking, and I go, Jack! Jack! And she looks back, and I just give that face. I, I, I lip the words like this. I go, uh, well, I have to say it out loud, but I go, for what? For what? You know? For what? <laughs> and I'm saying, for what? You know? And you know what I'm saying? Like, risk re re yeah, yeah. risk reward. Just, we're not on the Isle of Capri, and if you get over the waterfall, there's some fucking fountain and shit. This is it's fucking Rochester for your life. 
right? <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, so she, she gives me the look like, you know, like, what am I saying? So I go, I'm going back down. And she's like, all right, I'm going up. All right, all right. Now that, I'm sorry. So I go down. She goes up, right? Baba ba She makes it. She comes back later. And now she's back down. And I go, I'm sorry. That's, I find that to be an irresponsible parent. I go, the, the kid's not even impressed. It wasn't even like the kid was at the bottom of the rope when you got back down Go, wow, mommy. I mean, she was fucking playing in a pool of water, you know? Totally irresponsible. And uh, and even if you did fall, I mean, I can picture people reading the paper. Oh, honey, look here. Somebody else died in the waterfall. How about that? Sit that cough. And that's it. And that's it. For what? Now, what's your take, bro? What should take as a parent? Do you think you pull back on the risk reward, like, or do you just gotta live your life the way you live your life always? Well, you know, I, 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 I could see myself in that situation and line up full bore ahead. And I've noticed the people that are adventurous, like your wife, like Lana, don't die doing those things. It's people like us who decide to do something out of our comfort zone and we end up falling cracking our head open and we pass away so i understand where your head's at at this but i want to dissect this story in a way that you might not have thought about or maybe you haven't didn't verbalize it there's been countless times where i have done exactly what you've done to lana where maybe i don't want the someone around to hear I'll give a face or something, yeah, yeah. like let's get out of here or whatnot, and my wife don't pick up on it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like you're like for what? For what? <laughs> now, I would see that and go, hey, you don't want to go. Right. <laughs> like what are we doing? Exactly. How did it? I wouldn't go, huh? Oh, you know, oh like, yeah, but she knew. The, she knew what I meant. That's even worse oh, okay. when they get what you're oh. saying and they still blow you off. I mean, listen, I don't want to sound misogynistic, but that's disobedient. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, with oh, a lot of you, but your wife just don't know. At least that's a little more endearing. Like, but how do you not know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, it's like we're at the top of a cliff, or we're here. <laughs> like, I, I, you got to pick up on. I just think being together with someone for. 10 plus years you got to know their looks or their gestures or what have you yeah, yeah. and interpret that and, and go with it rather than you know asking what they mean or what they're you got, yeah about. you got but, it you should have that down by that it's like a basketball team has been playing together 10 years you should know each other's moves man yeah t totally but and then secondly i'm looking at you you, you sent me a photo which the photo is one of those live photos, which gives you like three seconds. Oh, is it? Bef bef before the photo, and then it's it yeah. stops, yeah, right? Yeah. I got to I got to tell you, and uh, this this when you're hanging onto this rope, bro, it, it looks old. The rope. No, you like the way <laughs> the way the way you're doing it looks like you know. When we were twenty one, right, and you were and you had to do this, you probably just look like a gazelle on the road, beautiful, smooth. Yeah, you yeah. look just the photo alone, the way the back is curled, and the way you're just kind of like looking for your footing. You go, oh, look at this poor old sap. <laughs> you know, listen, man. <laughs> you know, I'm in great shape, and I stand by my, my health and how I feel and look, but I hear you. But, bro, that goes right back into what I'm saying. Like a guy like, let, let's just take randomly, a guy like Andy Garcia, in his older days, <laughs> if he even did a hike like that, the guy's got the kind of class that he wouldn't even go five feet up that fucking hill right you would never see him looking that old and vulnerable right <laughs> they know to just wear their loafers sip their cappuccino what am i doing right off of a full hip replacement no less man that's what i'm saying i'm looking at this going you you almost lose your cool factor as soon as you grab the rope you're right <laughs> and then my wife, I'm looking at her up there like a fucking uh, Tarzan's wife. That looks even worse, right? Like this, that ship has sailed. You're not brave anymore. You're an elderly woman. Get off the fucking cliff. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, She's not 50, man. though. But I'm right there with you, bro. That's that's how I felt about it. And by the way, here's the other thing. That, you know, God forbid. Let's just be honest about it, right? The wife falls. Oh, here we go. Now I got to get a fucking van with a ramp, and I got to wheel you around everywhere the rest of your life. We'll go to, we'll go to the mall. Oh, mommy needs to go to the bathroom. We got, nah. It, it, it's it's a, 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 a burden on everyone. For what? And the people go, what happened? <gasps> what happened? Oh, she slipped on a rock in Rochester. How you doing? You know? I mean, at least be able to say, I fell out of a helicopter over Fiji, man. We were about to do windsurfing. It got crazy. Right? This is like, you know, that's all I'm saying, dude. And it, it busts. <laughs> So your wife's in a wheelchair, paralyzed from the neck down. Yeah. Somebody asks what happens. You go, she slipped and fell in Rochester, and she inconvenienced the whole family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. Now we got a van. I had to trade it to Tahoe for a van with a ramp. Uh, we had to sell the Victorian house and put all this work into it, and now we got a ranch. Right? A uh, little split level ranch or those ranch homes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you never you never hear this side. Oh no, yeah. Like, oh, you, let me plug my benefit too. The Jackie fucking foundation benefit. <laughs> Once a year, all my comic friends from Sebastian and Billy Gardell, they come to town and we do a show to raise money for the van. <laughs> <laughs> oh, By the way, bro, if I did that, you would call me and go, listen, I'll just I'll just send the check. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not playing the opera house in Fredonia, right, gang? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I got to kiss. I got to kiss Jesus after all that. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't hear that sign, bro. You're right, right? <laughs> no, you, don't, you always see, you know, on 60 Minutes. And granted, the, the, the injury is probably, you know, like, car accident a tragedy in the sense that maybe the person had no control over their injury right mm -hmm. you, you, you hear that a lot but when you decide to go up a waterfall slip and fall in rochester you never hear the guy or the woman going yeah no <laughs> like you never see them in an interview going no the why this happened was <laughs> uh, yeah no can i tell jack am i gonna tell him or you're gonna tell him? halfway up Halfway up, I told this princess no. I literally looked at her and said, for what? And she practically gave me the finger, all right? She, gave, she practically gave me the finger. <laughs> there we go. Was your daughter horrified? My daughter wasn't even watching. That's how unimpressed. She was frolicking in a, in a pool of water 20, 30 yards away. Yeah, so here we go. I, 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 actually, I actually told my wife, listen, if I, God forbid get in a situation where I am not able to do anything for myself and I have to burden you yeah. for you know, the rest of your life, pushing me around, this, that, and the other thing. I said, do me a favor. Just put, just put me in the backyard and just give me a couple orange juices and, 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 <laughs> and, 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 and leave me. Just, that's, that's it. That's it. I'm not going to go get another guy. Just, 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 just put me in a home. And that's the end of it. <laughs> and if I ask about another man, just lie. Don't worry. Just say I'm doing nothing. I'll believe you. I'm, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I guess I oh, would, uh, I'd watch uh, all of Magnum P.I. again, I guess. Magnum P.I.? No, I'm just thinking what I'd watch if that happened. Oh, yeah. No, I'd, I'd, I'd... Anyway. Um. <laughs> What uh? What else we got going here? Um, I'm just looking at my notes. I notes. gotta tell you this. Yeah, I gotta tell you this. So I tell you about the gardeners. Did, did I mention the story that they set up a tent for lunch? Yeah, you said they set up a tent yeah. with lunch. All right. So I used to do this, I don't know, about eight, nine years ago. We had some gardeners that we really liked. And they came and broke their ass sweating and this and that. So at lunchtime, they would be sitting there eating lunch on the lawn. I'd come out of the house with two Coronas. I go, guys, beer? Oh, yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, really appreciative. Yeah, nice. 
so I'm looking at these guys, and I'm like, they're sweating. It's 95 degrees out there. By the way, are you giving them Corona because they're Mexican? Like, if they were Russian workers, would you be bringing out X <laughs> or something? Or is that is that what you got in there, Corona? That's what I got. Right. That's what I got. Right. Uh... I'm looking at these two guys, and they go on break. So I'm like, you know what? Let me let me bring a Corona out to these guys. How many? How many? Two. Two guys? All right. Yeah. So he's sitting there eating lunch. I go, oh, Corona? He goes, yeah, just put it there in the driveway. I'll have it after my lunch. Now, I'm like, my God. This guy is behaving like he's at a restaurant, yeah. and he ordered it. Yeah. And he's telling me where to put it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, it's almost like a wife bringing out a couple cold ones for the husband watching the Monday Night Football. That's what he sounded like. Just put it over there. I'll have it after I'm done with my che- Cheetos. <laughs> right? Now, how do you feel? Like, you want to hand it to the man. Your man hands a man a beer. You're walking over him. Yeah, he was sitting down under a tree, which was, th- th- this is another thing. These gardeners find these little holes in the property to, like, eat their lunch. (laughs) You think they're scouting that out while they're working? Like, as they're clipping the flowers, they're looking around going, you know what? I'm going to have my sandwich here in three hours. (laughs) Well, this threw me because he was not under the tent. The tent was there, but he was in this little cubicle, like, in the trees. And then I'm like... I went in and I go, I'm looking at the tree and I go, did this guy carve out a spot? Uh, like, like, cause the rest of the trees look trim and then there's like a little carved out slot for him to go. I go, did this guy make whoa. his own break room <laughs> within my bush? <laughs> Just doing a little carving out of the underneath canopy. So he could fit his head. <laughs> this is, uh, whoa, man. And this is this is where you approached to ask if you wanted the beer? Yeah, this is, this is, so I left the beers, and then, you know, I'm thinking the Corona and whatnot. I didn't want to put the lime, because I, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't know who made this up, but I feel like if you have a Corona, you got to have a lime with it, right? I don't know. I don't know. I, as a, that, as if, I, if I was given a Corona by you when I'm yeah, doing your property, yeah. I, I wouldn't say, you got a lime too, sir? No, you wouldn't say that. But let's say I had you over uh, for a night and I said, Pete, you want a Corona? Said, yeah, I bring a Corona. And I brought it out, no lime. Do you go inside your head, you go, no lime? No, because I don't like a lime. But a lot of people would. I hear you. I mean, I, 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 th- okay. I think it's expected. You're right. Okay, uh, let, let me let me switch it up. Blue Moon, right? Yeah, you get an orange with that, right? I actually always tell people when they get it from me, don't I don't need an orange. And I've had some people say, "Well, that works out because I don't have any oranges." And then I said to myself, <laughs> "I'm never fucking saying that again." <laughs> <laughs> you ever say? Do you ever say no orange? And they go, they don't have any oranges. And do you ever say in your head, you don't have no oranges? And you were bringing out Blue Moon. Like, what if I wanted one? <laughs> no, not, if at a bar I would, but not at someone's house because I don't want the orange. <laughs> I've actually had people ask me, I want the orange. And I say, I don't want the orange. And then they're glad. They're like, oh, I'm so glad. I didn't want to cut it up. I was like, yeah, I don't want the orange. I like bringing out whatever it's supposed to come with. I like bringing out what, what the condiment. Is, now, right? do you think the Blue Moon people and the Corona people, they want you to want to have that lime, lemon, or or, or, or orange? Or do you think they're like, man, why do people think they got to put the orange in the, in, the, in the moon? It's so annoying. You don't need it. I don't know where it started. I don't know if it came from the company or some guy in Mexico decided to start, put lime in Corona and everybody now is put, right. put lime. I don't know right. what right. where it came from. I just feel like... It's wearing a shirt and no pants. Oh, you gotta bring out the lime. All right. So did you have a lime for the for the landscaper? Yeah. Cut the two limes, put them in a Ziploc bag, and left them right by where I left the beers. Right. Nice. Now, you ever do a nice gesture, 
and you don't get the expected response. Not that I'm doing it for the response. Right. I hear you. But you ever do something nice for someone and then the gratitude lands flat and you're like, it's the last time you're getting a beer. Yep, yep, yep absolutely, man. Like you, like you put it perfect. You're not doing it for that. But when you don't get it, you're like, what the fuck? Right? I'm with you. I'm right there with you. It speaks re- volumes when you don't give the gratitude. I'm not looking for this guy to lick my feet, but geez, something like, I mean, first of all, technically I'm the quote unquote boss. I'm paying these guys, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm bringing out alcohol during the job. I mean, it's, you know, you don't go. And uh, to Apple Corporation, and uh, your boss is bringing you a screwdriver at one o'clock <laughs> no, in the afternoon, right? No, let alone a little baggie with some sliced fruit, <laughs> so you can put it in your drink at your own convenience. I mean, come on, this is geisha type service right here, bro. <laughs> Oh, God. So, I don't know. I'm just trying different things here while I'm at home. I'm bored out of my mind. So, uh, uh, and then and then what happens? A little later on, you go and did you get the bottles? Did you notice if they had used the lime? That bothers me, too, when I get I, the lime and then they take it out and they put it on a napkin. I was like, could have told me you weren't going to use it. I wouldn't have sliced it and consider it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't even go back to see any remnants or anything like no. that. It was just it was just a gesture I did and after that uh Now Now, let me take you back to last night. Um speaking of, you know, last time I was telling you about the uh the the fire alarm, right? Yeah. Yeah. Last night 2 o'clock in the morning I got woken up by, I'd say, I want to say, and I got to Google this, a pack of either hyenas or coyotes. Now, I'm trying to figure out if coyotes travel in packs because this was at least six or seven. Had to be coyotes. They, they, they're like wolf-like. I don't think you got hyenas where you are. Do you have hyenas? <laughs> I don't know, but they had a laugh to them. Like, a <laughs> oh, shit, <bro. laughs> and it it felt like they were moving through my backyard, laughing, and then it sounded like they were eating flesh, like something dead. On, and, and I didn't want to. Now I'm up, right? right. I, again, Lana dead to the world. I got seven hyenas, probably about thirty feet away from the door. Wife is snoring. <laughs> what is what is it gonna take to wake to wake this woman up? Did you did you actually go out? Did you check it out? Well, here's the thing. I woke up, and again, I needed I needed somebody else's opinion on this. I give Lana a shot to the back, you know, one of those, you know, like I act like I was startled and I woke up and I hit her, but I was already up. <laughs> I love it. So she thinks you got All right, I got it. That's a good move. I got to try that one. <laughs> no, you, 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 if you want to wake your wife up, startle yourself and go, Ugh! and I kind of hit her and she's like, what? what? And then you go, know, what? And then. And then you go, oh my God! Do you hear that? <laughs> you, know, like, you act like you're both waking up at the same time. Yeah, but you've been up for three minutes prior. <laughs> you just even go, oh, I'm sorry, baby. I don't know. Did I hit you? Did I hit you. <laughs> so I go, does that sound close? She goes, man, that sounds really close. Now I didn't want to go out to the window to take a look. I think I've seen too many movies, right? Where you hear something outside, yeah. right? Then you don't hear it. And then the person goes to the window to look, right? And then and then you see boom. <laughs> boom. Like a coyote hit the window. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, that. dude. 
I, 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 you were getting I, the cameras up there, man. We got you. Got to get those those motion cameras going. You got to. I stop. got the cameras. I got the cameras. I tuned in. You did. Last night there was a fog that came through, and I don't know what the hell was going on, but I couldn't see the cameras because the, there was just too much fog. Holy. So I couldn't I couldn't see anything out there, and I didn't want to go to the window because I feel I feel if an animal is outside and they see a human being go to the window and they're with their friends, they go, "Look at this! He came through the window. You want, I'm gonna scare the shit out of him." Watch. I knew I knew if we giggled, we'd get him to come out. I knew we would. Look at him. We got him now. We got. Him. Let's do it. Let's do a circle. Let's circle the house a few times. I don't know if anybody else puts themselves. In the in the head of the animal, like we do. I mean, like like we talk that the animals are actually intelligent enough to <laughs> distinguish that it's three o'clock in the morning. Some idiot just got out of bed to see what the what the laughing's about, and now we're gonna have fun with them. Yeah, but they can sense it, man. I'm telling you, that's what they say. They can sense fear. Shh. Damn, bro, you are living like basically on a nature preserve, a wildlife preserve. Oh, I know, man. Every day it's something different, man. I got, uh, I got these mosquito pools they put in. They got three of them around the property because we got a problem with West Nile now. I swear to God, I don't know what's going on with the world. I feel like someone's controlling everything. They're like Corona. We got that out for six months. They tried to do the murder hornets, right? That didn't stick. Now West Nile is big out in California. I feel like someone's going to release the mosquitoes. It is, man. <laughs> it's like uh, the end of the world. So what What do these mosquito pools do? They Could they, like, attract them to one spot? And attract keep them. Away? and it's a, Yeah, it's better than actually bombing your yard with that spray. This, uh, the mosquito goes in there. I think they take it. I think it. I think it affects the reproductive uh, organs of the of the mosquito, where it can't hatch or lay eggs. So uh, oh, I'm gonna. I, I got this. I got this laced around the property because I don't, that's all I need is to go out at night for a cocktail on my patio and come in with fucking uh, meningitis. <laughs> now, did the mosquitoes affect the coyote? <clears throat> that's what I wonder, right? Like, we all got to run inside, but all these animals are out there. I don't know. Can they not get through the fur? Is that? I don't know. It's I don't know. Wildlife but is the, fascinating. The, 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 the deadliest slash insect slash animal is the mosquito. It kills more people than any other animal. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah. So, like, the idea is, like, because it could, it, it's doing mini blood transfusions, right? Like, it could suck your blood, then fly over to me, suck my blood, and put your blood in my blood? I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they transmit the, the West Nile or Zika or what have you. But I don't know if it's in the stinger when they're, when they're taking out your blood, they're giving you something. Yeah. Or if they take your blood and put it into someone else. I don't know. This is, again, way beyond... The Pete and Sebastian Shit. shows knowledge of the ecosystem of, of mosquitoes. Man, <laughs> that's bad shit. That's funny. I woke up Jackie last night, 3, 12 a.m. Uh, bro, we, we've been having serious problems lately with, uh, well, for a while now, Jackie has gets the hot flashes, right? That's where she's at in life. Yeah. So she keeps, I, I, the, the, the bedroom, I'm telling you, when I go to bed, I'm wearing a shirt, shorts. It's like I'm up to my neck, and I feel myself getting a head cold. And she's got a fan that she keeps on all the time. Ooh, terrible. And the fan is driving me nuts, right? And I'm, I'm trying to be cool, and I'm trying to be understanding of, of a situation. A couple times I'm like, can you turn it off? Well, a couple, like last week, she was sound asleep, and I got up, and I went around to her side, turn that shit right off while she was sleeping so last night i couldn't take it anymore it's 3 12 i pop out and i go fucking fans driving me nuts right and of course she jumps up now i scared the shit out of her instantly i feel bad i mean who needs that right you sound asleep and someone's <laughs> screaming <laughs> and then she's like you could have just nudged me and asked me nicely and i'm like i i just it's driving me nuts i can't take it i'm going to the couch 
and I grab my blanket and I, and I grab my pillow and I storm downstairs and I'm like f- I'm mumbling effing fan and then I get down to the living room and I go to lay on the couch but the street light is so bright it's like coming right through onto the couch so I'm like shit I can't sleep here I gotta go back up you know then I gotta go back up she's still up and uh, she's like, I'll turn it off. And I'm like, no, I know you need it. You can put it back on. I go, and then it's, it's, I get into this whole thing where it's like three in the morning. I'm going, what bothers me is I've been saying this two months, two months, and you can't go online and, and find a quiet fan. And she goes, I can't fucking tell how loud a fan is on the internet, Pete. And I'm like, all right, all right, whatever. I'm getting a Dyson. I'm getting a Dyson. And then she's like, they're $500. You're not getting a Dyson. And then boom, we go to bed. We go back to bed. And then the next morning I wake up, I'm like, sorry about that fan shit. She's like, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's insane, dude. Just that constant. So I don't know, man. I know Lana's way younger, but uh, and hopefully that day some women have it worse than others. But my God. I mean, like we'll be in the middle of the night. All of a sudden she just starts sweating like crazy. And then she stops sweating and then she's freezing. It's crazy. Nuts, man. I tell you, being a woman is I, holy hard. It's tough. It's tough, man. I mean, that fan, I don't know how you sleep with it. Uh, I can't have, I can't have anything blowing on me at all during the night. If 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 any wind or anything's blowing in, in, in my hair or whatnot, yeah. the whole night's screwed up. And it's funny, you mentioned like 312, 311, whatever time that was that you got up. I feel men... If they're getting up at night, they're looking at the clock, and they could tell you exactly when they got up, right? Yeah. Where, like, I'll ask Lana, I go, well, what time was it? Like, if Lana was up and I wasn't, I go, well, what time? She goes, I don't know. I think it was around, you know, one or two. Like, I don't know. I'm dead on. Dead on. Uh, then I like earthquake happened last night. What time? Two eleven. Two. Oh man, when I pop out of bed, first thing I do, boom. What time is it? I rarely know the date, but I always know the time, baby. I'm right there like, with you, man. Like, are you as good with the time where you could be like out, right? Like right now, could you tell me? Don't look at any any watch or anything like that. Could you tell me about what time you think this is right now? Yeah, I'd say it's about my time. I'd say if I had to guess based on everything, I'd say we're looking at about uh, 10.56. No, man. You're off. 10.56? Yeah, your time. Oh, no, no. 11.11. You're you're 50 50 minutes off, bro. I thought you would have been like really... Really locked in on the, uh, yeah. on the time. <laughs> oh, shit, man. <laughs> Why you think you would have got that? No, listen, I, I I pride myself on going throughout the day, and if I don't know what time it is, I'll go, eh, it's probably, you don't know, about 5.15. I'll look, 5.14. I'm like, God! I know. I, I should have made man. you go first. You wouldn't have got that close. <laughs> I'm usually good too. I'm usually within four or five minutes, man. Damn. Wow. How about this? Are you good where you're sleeping, right? Yeah. And then you wake up in the middle of the night. Are you good with going? It's probably about twelve thirty one. Like so I, I you, are you usually I am, but there are I'm not gonna lie to you, there's lots of times I'm saying to myself, that's ah, it's probably about five twenty two. And then I roll over, and I'm like, 143? Wow. Wow. I mean, it's exciting, you know? <laughs> I got that, too. I woke up with the hyenas, and I'm thinking, oh, yeah, we got to be deep into the night. There's no way hyenas are coming out before midnight. <laughs> no, absolutely right? not, man. Well, come on. There's still too much activity, too much human activity. <laughs> I look at eleven forty seven. The, the 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 hyenas were out. Really? And I and 
I thought it was deep 3.30. I thought it was going to turn over. 3.30, definitely they come out around 3.30. Yeah. I'm thinking, Jesus, I was just out there an hour ago. Oh, my God. Now, if yeah. I <laughs> – did they wait for me to go in, or did I just miss them? <laughs> you guys are going to overlap soon. It's because of the pandemic. They're like, no one's out. We may as well go out early. We're only waiting for the last <laughs> There's only one Italian guy in compression socks, but I think a couple of laughs will get him running inside. We don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you bring oh. up a really good point, man. Are they literally just right over the ridge, circling like this, slobbering at the mouths with the leader going, he's still there. He should go in any minute. Man. Yeah, I mean, do they send one guy out, one coyote out, go, go look, see what's going on. <laughs> and then he comes back, he's like, he's still drinking wine, this guy. <laughs> and, and, uh... <laughs> Fucking oh, guys on man. a second bottle out there. Holy shit. <laughs> um Yeah. So I'm at I'm at the gas station yesterday. It's, it's uh it's one of those gas stations like it's, it's right on the exit no, the on ramp to a freeway. All right? All right. I feel like those gas stations Bring in a different clientele than, say, the gas station that you normally go to in your neighborhood, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, f- I feel like the neighborhood gas station is like, yeah, the people that live in the area, maybe it's someone who came to your mall and is going back maybe 30 minutes to their area. But generally speaking, it's a people within a five, six mile radius yeah. of that gas station. Right, so, right. Ramp gas station this, you're talking about. That's fugitives who got to fuel up. They're on their way to Alabama. I'm with you. <laughs> so I'm pumping gas. And again, I don't know if this is just because I'm a comedian. I'm just really observing around my surroundings and what's going on. But Lana, no, it was my mom. My mom was in the car. I'm pumping gas. Now, as I'm pumping gas, you know, it's one of those things where all right, you put the little clip on and sometimes you got some stuff that you need to empty out of your car, you know, some wrappers and what have you. But there was no garbage in my car. Yeah, so yeah. I just start I just start scanning the gas station. Yeah. Now, off to the side, I see a guy uh, with a kind of a beat up car. I say a late model 1990s Escort. You know, one of those things where hubcaps missing. Uh, he's got shorts down past his knees. He's got a long t shirt on, a uh, white t shirt. Yeah. He's got a goatee. Oh. And. He, He's got a lot of silver rings, you know. I, I couldn't make out what's on the rings, but yeah, normally it's a skull. You know, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. guy. Oh, yeah. By the way, you ever see the car like that? And a part of you is like, like you ever go to pass inspection and the guy's telling me that uh, the, my exhaust is like the CO2 or something is not to the state standard. And then you see a fucking lemon like that pull up at the gas station. You're like, how is that thing pass inspection? And my Tahoe is a whole song and dance. It's a, it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, the the reason he's passing inspection is because he don't go in for it, right? But you, yeah, well, it, this guy. It, you, it's one of, these, one of these cars that doesn't have the registration. Like, they got the sticker from 2013. Right? Yeah. Now, I see him. He's talking to the girl. The girl is up on the, on his car, like leaning, and she's smoking. And as I'm getting into my car, I go, "Look at this!" And she's like, "What?" <clears throat> now, my mom's in the car, and this is happening literally off to the left hand side. So, I'm shocked that she hasn't seen this already. And he's visibly angry at her. You could tell, like. The head, you know, like that, that the head movement is like very, uh, and then, you know, there's a lot of like jerking, yeah. uh, react, you know, like, I'm like, oh, he's arguing with her. And she's paying no attention to him, right? Yeah. You know, and I just like, it was one of those things where I almost wanted to take a photo of what was going on because I feel in two or three days, I'm going to see this guy on the news. And then I'm going to see her picture missing. 
<laughs> it was one of those arguments. Yeah. It didn't look like, you know, some, some people get in arguments, you go, oh, yeah, no, this is going to end up in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, man. God, I don't know why these people like that got to live like he's got to know that he's scary to everybody. It's an interesting thing, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you look that frightening, don't you think you take the argument inside the car? Like, <laughs> or do they just do they just not even think about it? I just assume they really are that frightening. Like, oh, of course he's yelling at her about the hit out. Why wouldn't he? He's got skull rings on. <laughs> you know? And you're not, you know, obviously you're like, you know, I'm not going to say a word. This lady knew what she was getting into when he came strolling up to her with a goatee and asked to buy her a white wine. Come on. You didn't see this? <laughs> no, no, I think it's white Zinfandel. That's, that's a murder. I'm sorry. That's a murder drink. You get a white Zin at a bar from a guy, forget it. <laughs> oh, shit. So, so as I passed, you know, a, a good citizen would probably would probably roll down the window and go, "Honey, you okay?" You know, like you ever hear stories like that where where somebody asks if the individual is okay, yeah. and next thing you know, skull ring turns around and there's a hatchet in your forehead. Right? Absolutely, like, absolutely, man. Like we're. We're at the point now in this world, it's like, I'd like to ask if you're okay, but if I do, I'm going to end up in the woods. Who are you going to you know Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel, don't you feel that, like, the cops are all tied up right now? Like, like I feel like if I call the cop, that I'm going to literally get, like, uh, if you'd like to leave your name and number, we'll call you back and, and when it's your turn. Like, you know, when you're trying to make a Delta reservation or something. And I love the cops. I'm a big... <laughs> Giant cop fan. I'm just saying they're tied up right now. Everyone's a little yeah, more on their lot, own. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is listen. They got you, you. Whatever you're calling the police for. I mean, listen. The the days of hey, my cat's up in the tree. <laughs> 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 oh, the days are. Oh, the days are gone. Oh shit. Oh, oh. <laughs> Absolutely, man. <laughs> yeah, that ain't happening. Yeah. <laughs> oh God! All right. So what are we doing here? Uh, what are we doing? That's it. That's it. Let's uh, let's let's do a wrap here, and then we'll maybe get together uh, this week to for another one. But I think uh, I think we've exhausted our time here. All right. All right. So do we uh, say say goodbye? Just. <laughs> By the way, 25 on Apple Tunes, which is fantastic. Uh, I just want to thank the fans once again for all the support. Um, and uh, we'll be back. I don't know. We might surprise you with another cast this week. We got some We got some surprises up our sleeves. So pay yeah. attention to your downloads. It might come up uh, that you got another show from, from us. So we appreciate the listenership, and we will see you hopefully this week. All right. <laughs> 